Welcome back with a smiling face. Important note before starting, if you are a fan of audio stories then our Patreon account is the best platform for you, join us on Patreon for the best audiobooks ever. Luna's Resurgence Episode 15 Chapter 88-94 Jeremy POV J. Jeremy Nick's voice came through the mind link, it was strange and odd sounding, felt like he was in pain, but also spaced out. Something was wrong. His beta instincts kicked in instantly, he knew that deep down something was wrong with the Alpha. Boss he yelled right back, already feeling the link to his Alpha becoming fuzzy and unstable. He turned instantly, heading for the pack house. He'd left Nick in his office. Fear was embedding itself into him. First Brady and Valerie were missing. Now Nick, his mind link, was feeling really weak. That should never happen. Lucinda's blood, I, can't and then it was gone. Just like Brady's, he tried to re-establish it, but couldn't. Felt exactly like Brady's near non-existent line. Then he couldn't reach Nick at all. Kevin, Alpha's in trouble he roared down a mink link to his gamma. On my way came back instantly, all his gamma aura pouring down the line. Jeremy was running full speed, Cal pushing him hard with everything he had. They were yelling for everyone in their way to move, clearing a path. He burst through the eastern side of the pack house, full tilt through the unused ballroom heard the glass door shatter as it smashed into the wall, didn't care. Ran hard down the hallway, heading for the foyer and the Alpha's office. Stepped into Nick's office, his eyes widened at the sight before him, Nick was lying on the floor with a she-wolf on top of him. Not Lucinda, blonde hair. She had her neck to Nick's mouth, his pants were down and she had a hand around his CK sliding back and forth like no tomorrow. Please Nick, she was practically begging him, Jeremy was going to kill him, how could he? I'll mark you back right away he heard her say. Something was really off. Nick, he could see, wasn't moving at all, he was not fighting her off and Jeremy did not believe the man would allow another to touch him like this knowing what it would do to Lucinda. He had seen his mother go through that, he wouldn't do it do her. Nick wasn't touching her either, not actively involved in what Jeremy was seeing. What was going on? His eyes scanned the room to try and make sense of the situation, saw a syringe on the floor by Nick's feet, frowned, it was empty. What had been in it? Something to bring the Alpha down, he thought. Took in a deep breath, smelled Lucinda's blood, he knew what it smelled like from the fight with that bear. It was unmistakably the Luna's blood he was scenting. I want you, the she-wolf told Nick. Jeremy saw the blood now, on her neck, right over her neck and shoulder, where Nick's mouth was on her on her mark spot. Valerie. It was Valerie and she was covered in Lucinda's blood had drugged Nick and now the man thought she was Lucinda, his mate. Heard his alpha, his best friend moan his mate's name and knew instinctively that Nick was about to mark the crazy she-wolf on top of him, thinking she was Lucinda due to a combination of drugs and blood. This had planned this. She had tried to get the Luna's blood before, when Lucinda was in the hospital. Had access to a variety of mind-altering drugs he would presume, working in the hospital. Jeremy launched himself at her and ripped her off of his alpha used all of his beta strength to throw her clear across the room. She hit the wall by the fireplace, landed on the floor and picked herself up. Stared him down, her fangs were out. She had been ready to mark, Nick. Drugged her own alpha, to trick him into marking her used the Luna's blood and some sort of drug to actually make him believe she was his actual mate and it had worked. He did believe it. Had heard it with his own ears the way Nick had moaned Lucinda's name. Valerie shot across the room towards him. 
Jeremy watched her come, let her, as soon as she was at arm's length, snapped his hand out and wrapped it around her neck. The girl was always a little slow to react, could be taken down by anyone slightly faster than her and was way faster. She wouldn't have even seen it coming not with Cal's help and he was right there up front with Jeremy. Lifted her up off the floor one-handed, watched her struggle for oxygen, screaming and clawing at him, he had interrupted her plans and she was in a rage, hadn't gotten what she wanted. She never would. You're going to die he told her, Cal right there all beta now. A death sentence awaited her. Attacking the Alpha alone, was enough to allow them to snap her scrawny neck. But to drug him and try to seduce him into mating and marking her, was against the number one rule of the pack. Nick had a mate, one he loved, one who right now would be in agony thinking Nick had betrayed her. He wanted to snap her neck so badly, it was causing him pain not to. But he couldn't. Nick would want to do it himself. Rip would kill anyone who got to her first. She was theirs to deal with. As much as Jeremy wanted to kill her himself, could do it so easily, one quick hard snap to the left and her neck would break. He had the power and the strength to do it. He could not. She was really struggling to breathe now. He could see it. Was enjoying watching her struggle up off the ground with no way to save herself. Cal wanted to kill her too. Jeremy. Kevin had finally arrived. Jeremy turned his eyes on the man. Find the Luna now, he snapped. His beta aura was all out patrol too, western border, expect KYRA in a rage. Watched as Kevin's eyes moved from him to Nick's still body on the floor in the middle of the room, half naked and drugged. He murmured and was gone had assessed the situation correctly, it seemed. Jeremy heard him shift, his wolf would be faster, but still, even in wolf form, it would be a good 40 to 50 minute run from here. He tried to mind link Paulina, got nothing at all, there was no link to be established. Probably not a good thing. His eyes moved back to Valerie. She had stopped fighting him, a hand on his, curled around his fingers trying to pry them loose, pry his hand off of her neck. He would not be letting go yet. Lowered her to the floor, so her feet were just touching it up on her toes, eased his grip just enough to allow her to drag in a breath of air to stop her from suffocating. She was close to it, could breathe now but just barely where, is, Brady, he and Cal snarled at her. The way Nick's link felt, it was the same way Brady's felt. There was no coincidence, she had to have done this to him too. She said nothing, just glared at him, it appeared she wanted to keep her filthy mouth shut. Fine, you and I, he growled menacingly, we'll finish this in the cells and then he punched her hard to the side of her head, knocking her unconscious. Dropped her body to the floor and turned to Nick. Leaned over the man. His eyes were closed, though his fangs were still out open your eyes, Nick. Jeremy watched as the man struggled to even do that, took a good minute and when they did open his pupils were dilated all the way, barely any blue at all. Lucinda he mumbled it's not her. Jeremy told him, using all of his beta aura, to try and snap him out of it, shook him roughly trying to get him to come around come to his senses and shake the drug off. Smell blood the man was under a good dose of that drug, whatever it was. Lucinda, it is, he seemed to want to be able to talk but wasn't really able to. Too far gone, he supposed. Nick. Wake up. Jeremy used all his beta aura on him to try and force him awake. It was no use. Just freaking great. Nick's fangs were still out. If Valerie got anywhere near him, with Lucinda's blood all over her, he would mark her sorry man he thought. Cal, give me all you got, he's one tough. Trouble when he wakes up. 
Cal replied, not liking it. He'll thank us Cal. Trust me. He heard his wolf snort and then felt him push all his beta strength towards him. Jeremy looked at his best friend, his alpha, and sighed, never thought he'd ever have to do something like this. Punched him as hard as he could to render the man unconscious so his fangs would retract. The minute he was out, Jeremy saw them retract away. Emerson, Alpha's office now he shot at their trusted pack doctor. Fixed Nick's clothes, on the bright side, whatever she had given him did not help her cause the man was not aroused by her, not even with all he saw her doing to him. Probably gave him too much of whatever was in that syringe. Grabbed a wet washcloth and cleaned the blood off of his face and tried his best to remove it from his mouth. It was all he could do. Then left him there unconscious on the floor. Walked over and took silver handcuffs from the top drawer of Nick's desk. Ignored the burn that came with touching them barehanded, and heard Cal snarl at him as he felt the pain of them and didn't like it. Stalked over to Valerie and cuffed her hands behind her back, then sat and stared at his unconscious Alpha. Trying to fix this was not going to be easy. Lucinda had trust issues, and she and Nick had finally just come together were fully bonded bar the marking, just a technicality now, he had thought. Now this, if they could calm her down, perhaps everything would be okay. She would have felt the pain of betrayal, the minute Valerie had started touching Nick intimately. What a show. Jeremy tried again to reach Brady. Nothing. What had Valerie done to the man? Where was he? He turned and looked at her, realized he couldn't smell her actual scent, just Lucinda's blood. She had masked her own scent to help with her plan. So that Nick would smell only his mate's blood and nothing else. She'd wanted Lucinda's blood and had tried to get it herself. Now he knew why. She Wolf clearly had Alpha on the brain, so much so that she had broken the pack's number one rule. A rule Nick himself had installed. A death sentence and she knew that. Was she so stupid and obsessed, to believe that even if she had managed to get Nick to mark and mate her, he wouldn't wake up and rip her head off? Thought she would be safe because his mark was on her. Tricked into giving it to her. Ruining his bond with his goddess-gifted mate. A direct descent of the moon goddess herself. She was insane. Nick had a mate, loved Lucinda, everyone could see it, the man had changed since she'd been here. He'd learned all he could about Luna's in short order even taken a beating from Granny to help him understand what he was supposed to do. He smiled all the time now, especially when she was around, stared at the women with stars in his eyes sometimes. Wanted to please her. Had turned into one of those alphas he'd always found annoying. Never really understood what the mate bond would do to him, Jeremy supposed. It had hit him hard too. Jeremy had seen it for himself. Even in the car on the way here from Half Moon Pack, his friend had not been able to stop smiling. Smitten right from the start, just like all his loved-up wolves that day, only she was way more difficult. Jeremy smiled, like the Luna. She was fun. Hoped they could calm her down and sort this out. If this could not be fixed. If she rejected Nick for this. The man and his wolf would be a complete mess. A raging beast. Jeremy could well imagine. One viscous alpha. It might just push him into being just like the rest of his family. Emerson appeared and saw Nick on the floor, looked at Jeremy and the unconscious she-wolf, one of his own nurses, glanced around the room. Taking in the situation. What is in that syringe? Emerson walked over and picked it up, smelled it and frowned, ketamine. He looked at Nick and sighed, kin cause, in the right does, relaxation, euphoria, immobilization and hallucinations. He stood up and stared down at his alpha often found in she-wolves, who have been stolen and abused. 
keeps them pliable. Great. Jeremy muttered how long till it wears off. Emerson shrugged that would depend on how much he was given he looked over to Valerie. Jeremy watched the man smell her, saw his eyes widen as the realization of the situation dawned on him. That's the Luna's blood. Jeremy nodded where did she get it from, he asked the doctor directly. It had to have come from the hospital. Doesn't look like much, probably the Pax blood storage room. I had a vial in my private cool room, Nick knew. Who has access to it? Not her, he frowned, only a couple others I would trust. I'll have them report to you for questioning. Good. Heads are literally going to roll. I imagine and Jeremy did actually believe that. Emerson nodded, but said nothing about it. They all knew the rules. He'll wake up on his own. I can have him moved to the PAX hospital. No. Jeremy shook his head it wasn't just her, we don't know who we can trust right now. The less that know her plan didn't work the better. Till I hunt them all down. If you are sure, he will be fine. I'll leave him there. Emerson checked Nick over and nodded his heart is racing a bit and that breathing is all drug related. I'm certain he will be fine. How'd he get the bruise? I knocked him out before she came near him. It was very close, his fangs were out when I ripped her off of him. How long? Estimate for me. Hours, in all likeliest, if the dose was high and it might be. I'd be expecting it to be so with him being so big and an alpha, might be out all night. I'll check his blood work. Jeremy watched as the man took Nick's blood. Brady is missing, I'm going to presume the same drug, scent masked, like hers and a fuzzy unconnectable link, like Nick's was before it was gone completely. Ketamine will do that. It is why you and the alpha couldn't connect to those missing girls a few months ago it was in their system. Okay he nodded and watched Emerson leave, closing the door. So there was definitely more than one person involved in this little scheme of hers. That would likely account for Brady going missing. There was no way she could move his body on her own. He sighed. Philip, what are you and Sabella doing? Having dinner. I need you to organize a full troop search party. Brady is drugged and his scent is masked, somewhere in the Pax territory. Yes Beta. Valerie did it. Spread out from her place first. On it, I'll have Sabella track everything. Good, let me know the minute she finds him or your team does. Yes Beta. Jeremy sighed, contacted Samantha and had her come down to look after Nick. He was going to have things to do and was not about to leave his unconscious Alpha on the floor in his office vulnerable to attack. Even with the door locked and only the Alpha unit, Samantha and Emerson the only people with access, he would not risk it. Hmm, they must make sure Lucinda got access when they found her. He thought absently. Samantha arrived in short order, let herself in, looking quite frantic. A mother's fear for her child, he thought, was all instinctual and primal. She was on Nick and looking at him. Jeremy had to explain the bruise on Nick's face, and what he understood of what had gone down, then he had to keep her off of Valerie himself. Held on to her and reminded her gently that Rip would be so aggressive and angry if he wasn't the one to deal with the woman, he might not care who he took it out on. Nick might not be able to contain his beast. She had reluctantly walked away from the unconscious she-wolf. Turned and looked at Valerie at the sound of waking up. Watched her in pain the minute she was awake enough to know she was in silver handcuffs and begin to struggle. He really did want to snap her neck. Cal snarled all aggression at her, her eyes turned to him. I wouldn't move. Cal will hunt and kill you instantly and I will let him. Jeremy actually meant it would risk Rip's wrath. He belongs to me she had the hide to yell at him. 
He does not, Jeremy snapped. He was mine before turned up, she screamed. No he wasn't. Tossed your stupid A.S. aside well over a year ago. Like the garbage you are. And Valerie, when, he wakes up, he smiled at her, leaving the rest unsaid. Jeremy sat patiently waiting for any information, it was almost an hour before Kevin linked to him. It should have been sooner but with K.Y.R.A. who knew? Not good Jeremy. Paulina, the patrol guard she was with, has had her throat ripped right out, is gutted and all over the place. I had to track K.Y.R.A.'s scent, run right out of pack territory, and by the paw prints and distance of her strides, running at full wolf speed. Come back and neither of us will be able to catch her, not when she's running like that he'd barely kept up when she'd challenged Darwin and that was just her angry, not full of blood lust. Only Rip was likely to catch and cage her in. I have Philip and Sabella out searching for Brady. I'm going to take Valerie to the cells. The minute you get back. Still alive then. Nick and Rip will want a piece of her. All right, what are we doing about Lucinda? I honestly don't know. Can't really go after her when she's all bloodlust will kill anything and it took you what 50 minutes to get out there, she got a head start. 40 man. I don't think she'll come back on her own. I'm aware of that. Jeremy sighed, best to let her wolf get it all out, then Nick will have to hunt her himself, when he gets up. None of us will catch her. 89. Jeremy POV The minute Kevin walked into Nick's office, Jeremy got up, yanked Valerie up off the floor and dragged her out of the office, out through the front doors of the pack house, he could see other pack members watching, good he thought. Let them see the she-wolf was cuffed with silver and being dragged to the cells. It would be clear she had done something bad. The cells were a good thirty-minute stroll to the northeast of the pack house. It was a dark, dingy place that reeked of old blood and death. There were no windows in the underground bunker and only one way in or out. Through a heavy steel door with wolf bane jets loaded on either side, so if there was an attempted escape, a simple push of a button would dose the escapee and put them down, so they could be taken back to their cell. Every cell in the bunker had wolf bane loaded jets on the ceiling, all the bars were made from silver and every room had a hook in the ceiling to hang their prisoners from, and four rings on the back wall to chain them up to when not hanging. There was nothing else. No luxury given. If allowed to be unchained, the unlucky wolf in the cell had the pleasure of sleeping on the filthy floor. Valerie was pulling and struggling the whole way, but with those cuffs on her and his strength, she was going nowhere, had no chance of escaping him or what was coming. She had already spent a night there, Brady had put her in the cells himself, likely unchained. But today would be different for her. He could smell her fear now, it was getting stronger the closer they got to the cells, this would be her final place of residence, before Nick handed down her death sentence. Jeremy actually wondered if Nick would follow through on the law he had put in place. A public execution. A warning to the entire pack that the law was to be taken seriously and not to be broken. He'd never had to do it. No one had broken the law since Nick had put it in place. It was there to protect them all. Wolves are generally respectful of fully mated pairs. Only a rare few didn't seem to care about it. He and Nick had hunted all those down years ago, and put them down, to make the pack members feel safe to show he was not going to run this pack like the others before him. That there was no place in this pack for wolves like them. As Jeremy pulled her along he saw the guard look at him questioningly, stalked right past him, grabbed the keys from the man's outstretched hand, he was not stupid. Unlocking the first cell, he came to and threw her inside. She slammed into the wall on the other side of the cell, crying out in pain from the impact which she was unable to avoid or protect herself from as her hands were cuffed behind her back. 
he stepped inside and closed the door behind him, pocketed the keys where, is, Brady, his tone was low and filled with controlled anger. Dead by now, hopefully she half laughed at him. Jeremy was on her in less than a second. Had her shoved up against the wall, a hand pressing her head on the wall. If my friend dies, I am going to break every bone in you body, one, at, a time he snarled menacingly. Felt fear roll off of her in waves, but she still didn't answer him where is he. It's too late for him, she whispered. Better not be he snarled again. Jeremy's claws were all out now, even Cal heard her scream in pain as they punctured her face in five different places. Where? I don't know she was crying now. I don't believe you, where? He roared right into her ear, his full beta aura pouring out of him. She screamed in pain and tried to move and get away from him. Jeremy snapped his free hand to her waist and held her still, his claws out and on her, but not yet in her. He could smell her blood, and when he looked at her, he saw there was blood coming from her ear his aura with his close proximity had likely burst her eardrum. Well, she was going to be in more pain with every minute she didn't tell him what he wanted to know. Where, he asked again, squeezing her abdomen. I don't know. My brother took him. Said he'd deal with him she was sobbing. It was a possibility that she did not actually know, probably didn't care to know considering what they had once been to each other and so her brother hadn't told her. How many helped your traitorous, he demanded to know. I, I, she tried to shake her head, cried out in more pain as it made the claws in her face tear at her own skin. You can't protect them, Valerie. I am going to hunt them all. Kill them all. For the traitors that they are. Who are they? He dropped his voice low but forced his beta aura over her, felt her body want to bow down but forced it stay upright, which in itself would cause her pain. My brother, she sobbed. Stupid like you, Nick is going to kill you, after I torture every answer out of you, how much torture is up to you Valerie? Please, I'm sorry she was begging, he thought. Too little, too late. He withdrew his claws from her face and turned it, to look at him. You will answer me. I can't, I promised to protect them. You can't, he told her and dragged her over to the hook in the middle of the ceiling. This is going to hurt a lot. Picked her squirming body up and lifted her all the way up until the hook was over the handcuffs, then simply let go and stepped back. Heard her scream as her body weight dropped on the cuffs and her arms were forcibly pulled up behind her and over her head. Jeremy heard the pop of both her shoulders as they dislocated as they pulled straight and she was left dangling before him, tears were pouring out of her face. And she was sobbing uncontrollably. Jeremy laughed mirthlessly at her and how would you have protected them, he was curious. As, as the Luna, I could she sobbed. Pain filling each word. You are so stupid. Nick would have killed you, regardless. He has a mate, remember. She was staring at him, tears streaming down her face. Their names now. Jeremy stated and raised a clawed hand at her, a warning that he would rip it right down her body if she didn't tell him what he wanted to know. Watched as the realization that she was not getting out of this hit home. That he was going to torture her until he got what he wanted. Nothing was going to deter him. Paulina, Richard and Carol and Lacey my, mother. Jeremy finished for her, all her family members, it seemed in on it. And he was sure as to why. Liam had killed Lacey's mate, Valerie and Richard's father. By taking Lacey against her will and marking over her mate's own mark, killing him. Just so you're aware. You, Valerie, have killed them all. Gave each one of them a death sentence. Please. No, she begged. 
It's too late for that he snarled at her and left her hanging from the hook. Slammed the cell door closed, locked it. Turned and looked at her, then reached out and pressed the switch that flooded the cell's prisoner with wolf's bane, forcing her wolf away from her and left. No one goes near her. But the Alpha and the Alpha unit. Yes Beta the guard nodded and took the keys back. Brady, wherever he was, was in real danger. He reached out to the man, trying again with the mind link. It was still not connecting, but there. At least the man was still alive, but for how long he had no idea. Jeremy sighed, he was going to need every available person on this, to find a man, with his scent masked and near death, likely fully incapacitated and unable to help himself. He was about halfway back to the pack house when he stopped walking. There was a way to do it, get everyone all at once to hear him, and have a full pack-wide search started in only a few minutes. Nick could do it at will, as the Alpha had a tether to every single person in the pack, and it took only a few seconds for him to connect with the whole pack. Jeremy, on the other hand, could maintain about 10 or 15 to a link quite easily a warrior troop for when in battle, but never tried any more than that, there had never been a need until now. Today was the day he guessed, to see just how many he was capable of mind linking to. It'll kill us. Cal stated. He sounded annoyed, but was not against the idea, he was a strong wolf. We can handle it, Cal. Jeremy sighed. He really hoped that they could no other choice, we have to find him. Jeremy closed his eyes and cleared his mind of any distractions, to do what no wolf should do bar an alpha. Pulled on every line inside his mind, one at a time. Connecting himself to as many pack members as he could, all the warriors and trackers this pack had. Felt them one by one connect to him. Pain started inside his head at around 200, and was searing his brain by the time he reached 500. Killing us. Cal snarled at him. Jeremy ignored him, he could do it. Had once had Nick explain it to him out of sheer curiosity, never had he ever thought he would try it, but now he was doing exactly that. Breathing deeply in and out, focused on only those tethers and pulling them all to him he could feel them all inside his mind, they were all quiet awaiting his orders. He imagined they would all feel it was a multiple line. Staggered a few steps as the weight of what he was doing started taking a physical toll on him, he felt a pair of arms slide around him slowly and gently. Goddess, something smelled good. Took in a deep breath and felt, calmer, less pain. Pulled more people to his mind link. Breathed in again the smell of morning dew, jasmine and rain filled his nose. Beautiful. Mate. Cal whined at him. Wanting to stop to meet her, see her. Claim her for himself. Jeremy groaned as the lines kept connecting. With her there, the pain seemed less and he was able to pull more people to him. Nearly half the pack was connected to him now. His brain felt like it was on fire, this was it, he was at his limit. Find Delta Brady, sent masked. Drugged and dying he sent down the line finally to all those that were connected to him as he felt himself fall to the ground unable to bear any more. He felt a hand run through his hair, touch his face, sparks of electricity trailing all over his skin, it was the weirdest sensation, but so good at the same time. He tried to open his eyes. They were too heavy, his body was too weak from his actions. Felt a finger slid right down his nose and across his lips, managed to force his eyes open, wanted to see her, his mate, his goddess gifted mate without the full moon. She must be something so very special to be gifted like this. There was so much darkness, his vision failing him, he couldn't see her, his mate. The pain racking his body and brain was all too much. He could barely move at all. She was so close to him now, he could see her eyes, 
she was so very close. Her forehead touched his, she had the most amazing brilliant blue eyes, they were peering down at him, so very bright. I'm gonna, fku, when I, get up he murmured as his eyes closed, the last thing he heard was her soft musical chuckle and the words will you now and then darkness claimed him. 90. Kevin POV what was that fool doing? Kevin shot to his feet as he felt Jeremy open a mink link to him and keep it open, then suddenly it was an open channel. The man was connecting to other wolves. Kevin could feel them so many suddenly there as well. He was going to kill himself. Jeremy, stop it, you'll kill yourself he shot down the mind link at his beta, used all his gamma aura to throw at the man, but it didn't stop him. He didn't even acknowledge Kevin in the slightest. He was trying to connect to the entire pack. Only an alpha could do that. No one else had the strength or power for a pack-wide link. It was going to melt the man's brain. Enough he roared down the mind link again, nothing, severed the link from his end to try and lessen the impact on the pack's beta. The man was currently in charge of the entire pack with Nick incapacitated. No one would dare severe a link he had sent to them, they would all be standing around waiting on him to give orders to them. Not even Kevin, as the Gamma, would be able to stop them. Jeremy outranked him. The man, it seemed, was completely crazy. Even Nick was sure to go off into a rage and yell and tear strips off of him when he came around. If the he survived, that was, and with every person he was connecting himself to, the risk of death increased. What on this goddess gifted earth would possess Jeremy to do a thing so dangerous so very reckless? He left the Alpha office closing and locking the door, leaving Samantha in there with his unconscious Alpha. He would be safe. Headed for the cells which he knew was where Jeremy was. The man had taken Valerie to the cells to get answers from her. What information had he gotten out of her? That left Jeremy thinking he had to risk his own life for. Kevin saw several pack members all standing by, their eyes glazed over, waiting for Jeremy's orders. Goddess the man was insane. Kevin moved on, past the pack members, continuing to the cells. People were suddenly on the move, running off in all directions. Jeremy had likely given his order now. That had better be dead already or Kevin was going to pound on him all the way to the pack hospital, a place Kevin was certain Jeremy was going to have to be taken. Kevin saw Jeremy lying on the ground, his head in the lap of a very beautiful young lady. She was looking right down at him, touching his face gently. She would know it was the Pax Beta. Everyone knew who Jeremy was, even the little kids knew who he was, because the man liked to torment their Alpha on all levels, even got the kids in on it sometimes. Paid for them all to eat ice cream sundaes at the ice creamery before the prank was pulled. Wondered if the young lady knew what he had done. That he was likely dying in her arms. Maybe that was why she was holding him so he wouldn't die alone. Despite the man's current condition, she was smiling down at him. Kevin watched as the man, his beta, became very limp. He thought and started to run, watched as the girl turned his face to her and slid her hand down his neck. Stopped running and stood watching the girl. What was she doing? She was still smiling down at him, seemed very happy. In fact, Maybe he wasn't dead, just unconscious. Then she leaned down and bit him. Completely shocking Kevin, his eyes widened at her actions. She was biting Jeremy right on his mark spot. For a full minute her mouth was locked onto his neck, she was marking him as if he was her mate. What was going on? When the girl lifted her head, she started giggling. Her eyes turned to meet Kevin's stunned ones all glowing like brilliant blue neon lights. She put one finger up to her lips. Couldn't have been more than 18 surely, she looked so young, barely of marking age, 
didn't recognize her, couldn't put a name to her face. But she was mesmerizing to look at, shh she told him. Then laid Jeremy's head carefully on the ground and stood up. Looked down at the Pax Beta, put both her hands to her mouth, chuckling softly and then turned and ran away. Openly laughing now. Clearly amused by what she had done. What? Kevin yelled after her. She turned and looked at him, it's okay she yelled, still laughing, he's my mate and then she turned once more and ran off into the woods south of him. Still laughing, obviously very happy and amused by her actions. Kevin shook his head. Ran over to Jeremy who, thankfully, was still breathing, it seemed. He had to have been, to be marked by another there was blood coming from his nose and when he looked at the man's neck. Surely enough, there was a silver filigree there, that young girl had marked Jeremy while he was unconscious. Kevin wondered if Jeremy had even known who she was or scented her. By those glowing eyes of hers, it was a possibility that she was, oh. Kevin's eyes widened and then he laughed softly. He knew another whose eyes glowed like that and shook his head. You he sighed at the man's condition. His eyes moved to the fleeing girl, a beautiful girl she was, and a right hand full from all accounts, not a red head. That thought fully amused Kevin, who wondered how Jeremy would take that bit of news. Whom she had shushed him, cheeky little devil wanted to play with the beta. Well, Kevin could help with that. She had marked an unconscious man. The Pax Beta at that. It was not even close to a full moon, made Kevin wonder how she could know what he was. Was it even true? Were she and Jeremy mates? Or had she marked him knowing he was going to die? The girl did appear as mischievous as Jeremy himself. And from all he'd heard was a very naughty girl. Emerson? Jeremy tried a pack-wide mind link. What, was practically roared down the mind link at him get that fool here now. On my way. Kevin heaved the big heavy up into a sitting position and pulled him over his shoulder, stood and headed for the pack hospital, pack members were moving all over the place, dispersing everywhere. He grabbed one on their way past. What was the order? Hunting for the Delta, Gamma. He's reported to be drugged and dying. Go. Kevin nodded Brady is strong. Kevin thought. He carried Jeremy's unconscious body to the pack hospital. Emerson had a gurney waiting for him, barked orders for an MRI and for him to be set up with four fluids. Yanked the gurney to a stop as it was about to be rolled away. Turned the man's head saw his neck. Then waved them off. Didn't have that when I saw him earlier. Kevin laughed shh, don't tell him. Marked while unconscious, probably has no idea who she is. Do you? Kevin nodded. Yes, well I suspect as much. Make sure no one tells him. Let's see if he can feel it or even know who she is. You are as bad as he is. I am worse than he is. Kevin nodded to him. I'll be in the Alpha's office when, wakes up, he will write. Still breathing. Emerson nodded, so likely, let's just hope he hasn't melted his brain. How is Nick? Still the same. Emerson nodded as if he expected as much I'll keep the fool alive until Nick can kill him for his stupidity. Good. Kevin was the only one left awake out of the entire Alpha unit now, they were all down and out, goddess help us if we come under attack right now, with everyone spread out all over the place. Walked into the pack house and found Phoebe, his mate, standing by the Alpha's office waiting on him. She looked at him worriedly. It's going to be fine, he told her. Is Jeremy alive? Yes Phoebe. Unconscious but okay. Where's Nick and the Luna? She knew something was wrong, had obviously been part of Jeremy's pack wide link. 
Come he took her into the Alpha's office, where she could see for herself, their unconscious Alpha. Her eyes moved from Nick to him. If they're all unconscious. Kevin nodded, yes, I'm currently in charge. Sweet goddess, where is the Luna? Why isn't she here with Nick? He sighed heavily she's gone. What? Samantha gasped from her seat. Jeremy hadn't told her. Kevin sighed again and relayed all the information about what he had seen, what Jeremy had told him, and it was very clear to both Samantha and Phoebe what had happened. The pair stood staring at him. He saw pain in Samantha's eyes, she was already thinking about the consequences, he guessed. Phoebe looked a bit fearful. What's wrong? It'll destroy him, Kevin. Loosing his mate, his Luna. Kevin nodded, it was indeed going to gut the man, rip his heart right out. We'll find her and get her back. How? Phoebe stepped over to him. He put his arms around her, evidence, there are cameras everywhere, once we find her. She can see for herself that Nick did nothing wrong. Find her. Ran right out into rogue territory he nodded will find her, Nick will find her. He'll not give her up so easily. She was hugging into him, he stood with his arms around her. They had not officially met, she and Lucinda. But had interacted in the gym, when she'd been playing with the pups, Phoebe being one of the pack's school teachers, only the teens left the pack to go to high school and Nick was rectifying that. Phoebe had liked her. Brady was found two hours later, up in bear country, tied to a tree's root in one of the rivers, chin deep in water, with high tide nearly drowning him. Retrieved and sent right to the pack hospital for medical treatment. Oh, somebody was going to pay. Kevin left the Alpha's office and stalked to the cells, snorted with amusement as Valerie's eyes lifted to his, fear rolling off of her. Her face was bruised and had claw marks in it. He could see the blood coming from her ear, and noted the way she was hanging, both shoulders clearly dislocated. Jeremy had gone all beta on her, it seemed. Though it did appear he had shown some restraint. Brady is alive and well, he told her. Saw real fear embedded into her very soul, could smell it from out here on the other side of the bars. She had been expecting him to die, it seemed. Why would you want your mate dead, he asked all his gamma instincts there to catch everything she was putting out. Not my mate, I rejected him long ago. Still must have some feelings for him, he was once your mate. None, he's nothing. A worthless wolf she spat. Hmm, Kevin thought and watched her for a minute, at eighteen maybe but not anymore. She just stared at him and he stared right back, his head tilted to the side using his gamma charm to feel her emotions. There was pain and hatred, he'd been right. Kevin laughed softly at the thought of her in pain over Brady, a man she had rejected. Maybe he had rejected her too after he was named the Delta. Let's find out he rejected you, when he became the Delta and you came crawling back didn't he? She didn't say anything, just stared at him, but he could feel it. He was right the minute he'd said the words, he rejected you, there was pain inside of her, her mate had rejected her after years of dealing with her rejection of him, he'd not wanted anything to do with her. Smart Wolf Brady is. He deserves better he informed her, and then turned and walked out, flicking all the lights off leaving the place in complete darkness. Brady was the first to come to, stalked himself into the Alpha's office and snarled where is Valerie. Hanging by her dislocated arms in the cells, leave her. Jeremy has already got answers and Nick will want a piece of her. She injected me and her brother took me. Okay, let's bring him in, you can have a piece of him in the cell right next to his sister for her to watch. Brady was frowning at him. Let's wait, 
if Jeremy got answers, he'll have all the names, let's round them up all together, all at once. Let them think they got away with it for now. Okay. Kevin nodded. The man had other things in mind, it seemed. Seeing as he had been the first target, Kevin didn't see a reason not to give him what he wanted. Even Jeremy and Nick would allow him the option to punish them first. They were all in for a world of pain, once captured and Kevin just knew Valerie was going to have to watch her family be tortured for her crimes. Kevin headed for the pack hospital. It was just after midnight and Emerson had informed him that Jeremy was waking up. He stood by the man's bed, and watched him yawn and stretch, like nothing had happened. You he snapped. Ah, I'm alive ain't I? He smiled feel pretty well rested actually, nice dreams he smiled and sat up. Kevin shook his head. Wondered if the man thought that girl was a dream. It wasn't even close to a full moon, that was two weeks away, probably thought she had been. We got Brady. He's alive. Nick's still out. Jeremy looked relieved to hear about Brady. Come on, and tell us the information you pried out of Valerie. You couldn't have told me before you decided on your suicide mission. Oh and if you think, I'm not telling Nick about your stupid actions, you'd be dead wrong. Saw Jeremy tilt his head and roll his eyes. Months of crush duties coming at you I'd imagine. Jeremy huffed and got off the bed. I saved his A.S. saved Brady too. Emerson's report on Nick's blood work up. A massive dose of ketamine, he's likely to be out all night. Lucinda, his voice softened a little. Has not come back, as far as I am aware, and I'm on alert for her, as are all border patrols on the western side of the pack. Don't suppose she would come back on her own, he sighed. One more alpha who has hurt her is all she's likely thinking. Jeremy muttered come on, let's go hunt those other traitors down. 91. Jeremy POV. What a lovely dream it had been, he smiled to himself. Though it was probably his brain's last ditch effort to try and make him stop killing himself. He walked into Nick's office. The man was exactly where he'd left him though he had a pillow under his head and a blanket on top of him. Samantha was sitting watching him. She stood up when Jeremy walked into the office. If he'd lost both you and her. How do you think that would have gone down, she snapped right at him. Wow, she held some new authority. Now she had been ranked up to his mother, the power rolled right off of her and washed over him. Then she tilted her head and frowned at him, heard Kevin clear his throat and turned to look at him, found him shaking his head at her, as if telling her not to. Shrugged it off. Looked at Brady who was in Nick's chair. Security footage, he said without looking up. Good. We'll need everything to convince Lucinda of the truth he nodded, watched as Brady glanced at him and also frowned saw his eyes glaze over for a moment, smile, and nearly chuckle, then it was gone, slid a USB drive across Nick's desk at him. That is what you will need for the Luna. So what are you doing? Man hunting for that who took me. Valerie's brother, Richard, Jeremy informed him, I know who it was. Seems to have either bolted or is in hiding, but I'll get him. I got a list from Valerie, her brother, mother, sister-in-law, and Paulina her cousin, though Paulina is dead already. KYRA took care of that, I believe he turned to Kevin, who nodded. Haven't actually checked that footage yet, being the Gamma, might, I'll do it. Jeremy nodded, he understood what the man was thinking. Being the Gamma he might feel her pain from just watching her go through it. But no one had been able to predict the events of the day, and therefore Kevin had not been able to be there to help her calm down and keep her on pack territory, to hear and see the truth of the situation. 
They spent the night tracking and then hunting Valerie's entire family. It had been Valerie's mother who'd had access to Emerson's private cool room. One of his most senior and trusted nurses. Her sister-in-law seemed worked with beans and had managed to snag a scent masking spray. She was the easiest to pick up, still at home, her mate not. She hadn't even put up a fight, probably been expecting them. And it had been Richard who had taken Brady. Paulina. It seemed didn't do a great deal on the day, but Brady told them it had been her and Paulina in the library that day. Lucinda had overheard people talking about Nick and had upset her. The footage they saw of Paulina and Lucinda, showed Paulina laughing and looked to be tormenting Lucinda, even kicking her. At some point, KYRA had ripped out of Lucinda so darn fast it was a blur on the camera system and ripped the woman apart literally. Deserved it, KYRA wouldn't stand for that kind of treatment and had not. Then she had bolted clean out of the pack. Jeremy had gone after Lacey, Valerie's mother, she'd been watching for them, it seemed, and bolted out of her home at the last minute and Cal had run her down in less than a minute and hauled her to the cells, put her in a cell right next to her daughter, doused her in wolf's bane and left her there. Carol was sitting in her cell head on her knees hugging herself. It had taken a lot longer for Brady and his assigned warriors to bring Richard in. That man had armed himself and holed up in an old unused rundown cabin on the very far southwestern border. When he realized things had gone south, odd that he hadn't taken his mate with him. But Brady and his ten warriors, the man who had been taking shots at them with the gun he'd taken, had been no match and in the end, was hauled in. He'd shifted halfway to the cells and he and Brady's wolf, Coop, had gone toe to toe. Brady had near killed him. Barely been able to restrain his wolf or himself for that matter. Richard was lying on a cell floor with many wounds, silver handcuffs on, unable to heal himself. Jeremy had watched as he yanked Valerie's cell open and stalked right up to her hanging body and snarled at her. Lifted her off the hook and put her down on the floor. She couldn't stand at all. Jeremy had been curious about it, thought the man and his wolf were going to beat the living out of her. He squatted down right in front of her. Here, let me help you, he said softly. Then stood. She was looking at him with hope in her eyes. Then he reached out and relocated her shoulders one at a time, with a violent shove that elicited a scream of pain from her with each action, thank you she told him. Don't bother. I did it only so Nick can rip you limb from limb he'd turned his eyes to hers and then grabbed the handcuffs, ignored the burn it would have caused him pulled her arms back up over her head and lifted her right back up onto the hook and left her there, leaving the cell without another word. None of them were likely to survive the day, probably not make it past mid-morning, probably not more than a few minutes past Nick waking up and finding out Lucinda was gone, to be honest. The minute he recalled or maybe not recall it, due to the drug in his system, he got to hear or see it for himself he would be on an alpha-induced rampage. How long it would take the man to explode was anyone's guess. He did have a temper. Jeremy had seen it a few times, mostly around Samantha and Mary when they were in danger and he'd had to go and save them from some sick, before he'd been in charge, viscous he was, even without rib. Had learned to keep himself and his wolf in check, most of the time had actually kept Rip inside of him when dealing with anyone here in the pack before he took over, not wanting anyone to see his wolf. He'd been planning to take over this pack for a long time, and hadn't wanted anyone to see his wolf and know what he really was. Samantha had managed to get Nick into an alpha college at 18, right before his father had been killed by Alex. His father had actually approved and paid the full two years tuition up front. He'd trained with other alpha wolves for two solid years, coming home every weekend to check on Mary. And then spent five years just training with Jeremy, mostly in secret, 
for the day that they both knew was coming. It's why he could take Nick down if need be, he knew all his moves. Jeremy was expecting a complete alpha wolf rage to explode out of his friend. Whether the four traitors died in the cells or in public, would depend on whether Nick could or wanted to contain the rage that would be brewing beneath the surface. Whether he lost all control and Rip would be released in a bloodlust-filled rage, that no one would be able to contain, control or calm down. No one but Lucinda herself, he supposed would likely have to tranquil Lisa him as they did KYRA if he was endangering the pack members. Kevin and Brady were both dozing in the chairs in Nick's office, they were all just waiting for him to wake up now. The sun was just cracking the horizon when he stirred for the first time, but had not woken. About ten minutes ago now. Samantha was currently packing back and forth, biting her thumbnail, more than nervous for him to wake up. Jeremy didn't think he'd ever seen her like this before, not about Nick anyway. She had not gotten one wink of sleep all night. Sat and watched him, prowled around and checked his pulse on a regular basis. Not that she needed to. She could hear his breathing and likely his heart rate with her wolf's hearing. She'd called Mary, who was on her way home, be here by lunchtime apparently. He'd not heard the conversation, but could well imagine his sister's reaction, if Samantha had given her all the horrid details. Her own alpha-blooded fury, she also had quite the temper. Hopefully, she wouldn't come in here all ready to kill anything, like he would be. Jeremy sighed when he saw Nick's eyes finally open. Samantha hurried right over to him. Her quick sudden movement brought both Kevin and Brady to their feet, eyes wide and at the ready for action. Jeremy waved them back to their seats. They'd been instantly alert for trouble, it seemed. Welcome back. Jeremy said. What happened? He sat up and put a hand to his head, his eyes closed for a moment and he groaned. A frown marred his face. Emerson had said to expect a hangover-like reaction as a side effect of the ketamine he'd been given in such a large dose. You were drugged. Jeremy told him. Saw Nick's head whip around to stare at him, what? M.M., been out about twelve hours, give or take. Jeremy informed him, staying calm and keeping himself in full control, he needed Nick to stay calm and he had a lot of information to take in. Jeremy had every intention of holding off on Lucinda not being here till the last minute. All their pack members were currently in their homes and not allowed to leave until Jeremy allowed it. They all knew by now that had hit the fan. He couldn't keep it a secret once he'd sent out a pack-wide link. Something only the Alpha should have done. That it had been the pack's beta doing it spoke volumes. Did you find Brady? he asked rubbing his temples. Here, boss. Brady answered him. Where were you? Nick asked him. Finally getting up off the floor, he staggered a bit and Samantha reached out to support him. He let her. Drugged like you were, he sighed, tied up and nearly drowned, I believe. What? Nick frowned at the man. Nick. Valerie and her whole family are in the cells. Jeremy told him. Watched as he tried to process and figure out what was going on, he didn't seem to remember what had happened yesterday, which meant Jeremy was going to have to tell him. His eyes moved to Jeremy and his head tilted to the right and he looked at him with a frown, who's the lucky she-wolf, he asked out of the blue. What? Jeremy frowned confused by his statement. Your mark he was looking at Jeremy's neck. Jeremy's eyes widened, what? he asked, shocked, and reached his hand up to touch his neck, shot to his feet as it tingled under his touch, and he could feel the mark itself what they, he bolted for Nick's bathroom and turned to the mirror. He'd been marked. Shivered and shook his head as his fingers ran across it, pleasure coursed through his neck. Not a dream, he thought. 
Crazy She-Wolf had marked him, and he didn't even know who she was. Blue Eyes was all he had seen. Then it appeared had left him for dead. Who did that? He came out of the bathroom and looked to Kevin, Brady and Samantha accusingly what? Don't ask me, I was out man. Brady shrugged. Or me. You had it when you came back. I just presumed you knew. Samantha told him. Kevin shook his head to you're on your own man. Nick had moved over to the drinks trolley and was drinking a large glass of water, watching all of them but someone had to know who it was. Who found me? I did. Kevin stated you already had that he shrugged. You didn't see anyone? Nope. Kevin shook his head. Jeremy frowned. Where's Lucinda? Nick asked, finally realizing his mate was not in the room, and should have been considering his drugged state. A mate very rarely leaves an injured mate. It was painful to do so. They all turned and looked at him. Jeremy watched Nick take in everyone's expression. Here it was the moment he'd put off till he had to. Do you recall anything, Nick? Jeremy asked him quietly, his mark and mate would have to wait. He watched as Nick frowned and shook his head. Watched as he tried to reach out to her through the mind link. Watched him register that it wouldn't connect. Closed his eyes and just knew he was trying to locate her through the pack tether that was hers, his mate's. His breathing changed almost instantly, quickened, as did his heart rate. Jeremy noted with his wolf senses. Nick's eyes snapped open and right to him where is she? We don't know Nick, he answered honestly. She's not in the pack he snapped, looked to them all. His eyes fell on Samantha. Where? What happened? She's gone, son. Samantha told him softly. The glass dropped from his hand, and shattered on the floor. No he shook his head we were fine. Nick, you need to understand, before you lose it. Jeremy walked over to him, and guided his friend to his office chair. He seemed to just have gone into a state of shock. Jeremy had already loaded the footage for him to see. Please stay calm Nick he pushed him into the chair and clicked the button to allow the scene from his office security footage to run. So he could see what Valerie had done to him. Took a step back but kept a hand on his shoulder, watched as Nick stared at it, his muscles all tensed under his hand, saw Nick turn it off when it was finished. He'd not said a single word at all. It couldn't be good, Jeremy thought. Nick would know the ramifications, what it would have meant for his mate. What it would have done to her, made her feel. His head turned and his eyes tinged red looked right at Jeremy questioningly. Both he and Rip wanted to know. Gone, Nick. Out into rogue territory he answered the unspoken question directed at him. The man was breathing heavily but was so quiet, it was not what Jeremy was expecting at all. But he could feel the waves of fury rolling off the man. Jeremy could well imagine everyone in this office could feel it. Where is Valerie? His tone was deathly quiet. Her whole family. Jeremy could tell he was recalling their previous conversation, in the cells waiting on you to wake up. Bring them all he stated still in that deathly quiet tone. All Alpha now. It appeared his friend and Alpha had shoved all his emotions deep down inside and was solely focused on the traitorous she-wolf, not ready to deal with the half of him that was missing. Jeremy nodded yes Alpha turned and looked to Kevin and Brady and they left to go and retrieve the four prisoners. Is there footage of my mate? Beta. Yes. Jeremy answered you might not. Show me he seated, cutting Jeremy off. Nick you don't. Jeremy shook his head, it was not fun to watch, Jeremy had hated seeing it, her pain and agony, not to mention that she-wolf she had been patrolling with kicking her and laughing at her pain. Show me he roared, 
all his alpha power and anger rolled off of him and through the room, a direct order Jeremy couldn't fight. Samantha fell down onto her knees and bowed under the weight of his aura. Jeremy stepped over and loaded the footage and hit play, unable to do anything else with an order on him. 92. Lucinda POV Lucinda sat in the water of the reserve, the sun was now up and well above the horizon, she had a hand out, her fingers tracing the petals of an open lotus flower, her mind was blank. Her body was numb felt nothing anymore, wasn't thinking about anything anymore, just staring blankly at the flower. The growl that came from her right, turned her head slowly to it, not particularly concerned by it or its aggression at all, more out of curiosity, her eyes moved to see a man standing about a hundred yards away. He was completely naked and growling at her. Her head tilted slightly to the right, as she took him in. He was tall, with long brown hair, dangling unkempt around his shoulders, he had black eyes that were filled with anger as he stood staring at her, had high prominent cheekbones and thin lips. It was Alpha Darwin. Alpha Darwin stood before her, here on her pack territory. Her eyes moved beyond him. Then back to him. He was alone before her once again. Get out of my pack he roared at her, his alpha aura thrown at her. Lucinda's head tilted back the other way, a raised eyebrow now, as she stared back at him. His pack? Did the man believe he could destroy everything and then claim it? Had he been here all this time? Had he never left? She'd felt a foreboding on the western side of the pack. Perhaps it was him she had unwittingly sensed. So she had stayed away. This was her pack. Not his. How dare he lay claim to the White Lotus pack, after all he had done to it. To her Luna. It is my pack she replied, hollow she sounded, nothing left inside of her anymore. Felt KYRA for the first time in hours, stalked forward inside her mind to peer at the man, a snarl came from her wolf. Get out he roared at her again. Lucinda stood slowly and turned to face him, unaffected by his alpha aura. She was the same rank as him. Unafraid of him, she had nothing left but this pack and she was not about to let him claim it for himself. I am Luna Lucinda she rolled all her Luna aura at him, its full force. I am the last remaining Luna of the White Lotus pack. Daughter to Felicia White she announced herself for the very first time in all her life, her true title, with full authority this is my pack. You are trespassing she walked slowly out of the water to stand by its edge and stared him down. He was feeling all of her now, getting a taste of what she was. He had thought she was just some rogue, she supposed. Well, he was very wrong. He had no idea what she was or how much trouble he was in by being here. He stood watching her for almost a full minute and then an almost gleeful look spread across his face as it registered with him that she was Felicia's daughter, the woman he had come for, an offspring, he thought, she guessed. Then you are mine. I will have what is mine. He sneered at her. Will you? she asked, tilting her head again. Would he be so lucky? Watched as he took a step towards her, put a hand up to stop him. Do you want to know, who killed her? Darwin froze in place and she lowered her eyes to the ground, an evil-sounding cackle escaped her, a menacing smile touched her face, she felt Kyra push forward and they both looked at him, registered fear in his expression, oh yes he should fear them. For they were one now. A nasty smirk now appeared on their face, aimed right at him, their head tilted even further and they felt a glorious glee fill them, at being able to tell the man who it was I did. Her eyes were wide, crazy looking. She felt a little bit insane, taking in all his reactions it was my blade who killed her. A giggle erupted from them, hollow and chilling to their own ears, their eyes were on him, they were going to have a piece of this man. 
saw anger fill his expression, he'd been looking for her for a long time, as they had him. Fury was starting to pour off of him, he'd finally found the one, who had killed what he wanted. They had finally found the one who'd taken everything from them. A murderous glee filled them and as they saw him run at them, KYRA pushed all the way forward and shifted them, instantly to their wolf form. The fastest shift they had ever done before let it all out KYRA, let's kill him, together. Rage and pain filled her and her wolf. Darwin shifted slower than they did, and KYRA was already on him and ripping a chunk of flesh from his ribs before he could even complete his shift. His wolf turned to them and snarled loudly and aggressively, his alpha aura pouring out of him. KYRA returned it in kind. All she was, all her Luna wolf aggression and power aimed right at him, saw his wolf actually take a step back, she held more power than him and he knew it. KYRA's hackles were all up and all her teeth were showing, her long claws digging into the ground already waiting for the moment to launch her attack on him. It was a full challenge, her Luna howl unmistakable just like the last time they had come across him. Only this time, they would not be denied. No, Alpha could not accept it, even though he had already backed up a step, a challenge for the right to own this pack, had been issued and his wolf howled right back at them, accepting the challenge as they knew he would. Then they were launching at each other, biting and ripping into each other's flesh. KYRA tore into his back and he bit right into her shoulder and tossed her off, a chunk of his flesh going with her. She spat it out. He was on her with his claws in her underbelly, she used her back legs to kick him off, felt the scratch across her belly, rolled over and got up, shot forward, clawing her longer than normal claws down his wolf's back leg, and bit his tail. His wolf tried to get her off of him. KYRA bit down hard with all she had and yanked with all her force, pulling the end of his tail off. His wolf howled in pain, the end of his tail dropped from her mouth as she turned and stalked him, his wolf was snarling at her, there was blood dripping from her mouth, fresh and hot. Blood was coming from his tail, now only half there. Blood lust boiled up inside of them, and she turned on him, a savage beast clawing and ripping, bit one of his ears clean off, felt him bite into her side and claw her back, shook herself violently, and he was off her body and thrown to the ground and her jaws were on him clamped around his front paw, the very paw that had cut off Felicia's hand to lock them inside the pack house to burn them alive. Felt his wolf bite her right on the face, and it helped her to clamp down right on that paw and felt his bones crack under the pressure. His wolf let go, howled in pain and then bit her front leg as she was trying to rip his paw off, yanked so violently at her that she stumbled and nearly fell, letting go of his paw. Shook herself tried to take a step and stumbled, watched as his wolf stood lame in front of her holding its paw off the ground. Took a step towards him again, felt her own leg not cooperate and lifted it instinctively off the ground, lame herself it seemed pushed herself forward with three legs, and attacked him again, biting into that lame leg as his wolf backed up and away from her. It was not over as far as they were concerned. He might want to stop but they would not be, not as long as they were still breathing and conscious, this fight would continue till one of them was dead. She bit right into that lame legs, shoulder joint, he was wounded now. Now was the time to bring him down. His wolf tried to shake her off, but she would not let go, no matter the clawing his back legs were doing as she forced him down onto his side, and started dragging him by it, biting harder and shaking her head, pulling at that joint until she felt his bones crack and his skin was tearing, she was pulling and ripping with everything that she had, till his wolf was laying on the ground, pouring out blood, howling in pain. In her jaws was his severed leg. Watched him being forcibly shifted back to his human form, his wolf too weak now to sustain him any more, blood was pouring from his severed arm and he was trying to drag himself backwards away from her. 
Kyra dropped the severed arm to the ground, it too had returned to normal and snarled at him. He stopped moving and stared at her. I'll leave, he said to her. You'll die they thought together. They stalked right up to his human form. He was of no threat to them now, and his life was ebbing away from him, he was fading fast with that much blood pouring out of him, that was too nice a death, for him. He would go in pain. Kyra leapt forward and latched on the horrid Alpha's throat and ripped it clean out, his body fell to the ground with a solid thud, his eyes staring lifeless at them. The last thing he ever saw, the last Luna, of the White Lotus Pack. Extracting the revenge of her entire pack upon him for his crimes against her and her people, both dead and alive. Never again would he lay claim to what was not his, be it land or wolf. Kyra shifted them back and Lucinda's eyes looked at the man, who had destroyed her peaceful life, ruined everything around her, taken away the man who loved her. There were no tears for him. She felt nothing at all. Just turned and walked away from his bloodied and ruined lifeless corpse, he had gotten all he deserved. Her left arm felt funny, she looked at it, it hung limply at her side, reached for it and cradled it against her bare chest as she walked away. At least it didn't hurt. Nothing really hurt, she thought absently. They walked away to find a place to rest slipped behind the ivy wall and walked down the long dark tunnel till she reached the end, lay down and curled up on the floor. Finally it was over, her women and children, Felicia's actual daughters, now safe forever with James and Gabby. They would never have to hide and live a life of fear that, that horrid wolf would find out they were alive and come and hunt them down, to kill them, just for surviving his first brutal attack. She had done her duty as their Luna. Finally been able to defend and protect them. She could rest now. It was all over and she was so very tired of surviving, of living in fear and never being able to return home. She was home, had defended her home from an invading Alpha and won the battle, could now become the ghost who would haunt it forever and always. She closed her eyes and sighed. She was so very tired needed to go to sleep. Lay there on the cold floor, beneath her destroyed pack house, technically in her home, the only remaining part of it left. Felt Kyra whimper in her mind and then receded away from her, it was time to let go, so she did. A long deep breath in and then claimed by the blessed oblivion of darkness. 93. Nick POV his heart was cold as he watched her scream in agony, as pain coursed through her beautiful body. Watched as his own pack member, kicked her to the ground and laughed at her pain. Seemed to really enjoy it. He watched as Kyra ripped out of her in a blur and killed that she-wolf, got a quicker death than she deserved, he thought absently. As he watched her tear into that lifeless body, destroying it completely and then run from his pack. Rip was standing inside his mind, still as can be. As they watched their mate run. Flee from their pack, believing he had betrayed her, how could she not? After what she had felt, what Valerie had done to her. Done to him. Done to them. Reached out and turned the screen off. His whole body was filled with rage, he was seething. He stood and walked outside knew his beta was walking directly behind him. Did not blame the man for not going after his mate, she had been in a full blood lust rage, nothing and no one was going to survive her right now. Actually felt sorry for any rogues she came across out there. They would not survive her. Nothing would right now. Likely including him. He walked all the way to the road at the front of the pack house and stood closed his eyes and used a pack-wide mind link to call his pack to come to him for its first ever public execution. It was not an order but a statement. They would have the option to come and watch or not. He did not really care who came or not. Didn't care if no one showed up to see the deaths that would happen today. 
he could hear her with his wolves hearing her struggling and crying, begging for her life. It was not going to happen, it would not save her. He stood there on the road, his hands were fisted at his side, every muscle in his body was taut. Rip was right there with him. Nick knew that his eyes were red for all to see. Probably looked like a monster and today he was going to be. He watched as people started walking up towards the pack house. They were here to see who had broken rule number one in the pack. It was the only rule that he had established, with such a harsh penalty, that he had hoped it would deter all his wolves from doing anything so vital ever again. Now one of them had, and others had helped her to do it. A lot of wolves came, he noted, no children thankfully. Some came in wolf form but most in human. They lined the other side of the road, to wait for it to begin. He had turned this pack around and thought everyone appreciated and respected him, but it appears not all did. Today he would show just how an alpha displayed fear and power all at once. Today, his remaining wolves would realize he would treat anyone who tried to harm their bonds in the harshest way possible. Nick held a hand out to his people, bringing the prisoners, traitors. The lot of them not her he stated without even so much as looking at them. His voice was devoid of all emotions. She would suffer today. He stood and just let them take in what their punishment was going to be. That they had broken rule number one and invoked its punishment in full. He waited until he saw no one else coming to this execution. Then he turned his eyes to the three who had assisted in the crime against him, and their Luna. Kevin was holding Lacey, two warriors were holding Richard and Carol. Who gave my mate's blood? The Luna's blood. To her, the last word was snarled out of him and his and pointed right at Valerie, he didn't need to see her to know where she was, she currently still had Lucinda's dried blood on her, evidence to her crime. The older woman, Lacey, was pushed forward Neil he did not give her the option, flooded her with his alpha aura, forcing her to kneel before him and knew her neck would stretch and bear before him in submission your crime, he demanded she answer him, and when she didn't, his eyes actually moved to her. The very large crowd that had gathered before him were all quiet, you broke rule number one interfered with another wolf's bond. Your Alpha and Luna's bond at that. Nick heard half the crowd gasp, they had known what this was about, but they had no idea of whose bond had been interfered with, or ruined, and now they understood completely, that these people before them had done something terrible and not just to anyone. To their own Alpha. Your punishment is death he was watching her. She said nothing at all, resigned to her fate. It seemed why did you, he grated out. Frosts, don't deserve happiness she spat out at him. Nick nodded, he knew what she was talking about. Liam, who had forcibly mated her and then marked her right over the top of her mate's mark, killing him. Then he'd rejected her once her mate had died. The man had been a brute, relished in severing others' bonds. Why? Who knows? I will make your death quick, he stated, and snapped her neck, heard both her son and daughter cry out in agony as they felt her be severed from them, pain he once had felt. Knew it hurt. Bring him he stated right here he pointed to the ground next to Richard's mother's lifeless corpse. He was forced to kneel by Kevin, with a boot to the back of his knee. The man fell face first onto the road and Kevin yanked him back up onto his knees. It seemed one of his unit had taken to the man. He was already black and blue, one eye swollen shut, he was wearing a simple pair of shorts and he had many wounds across his chest, a wolf tore into him, he supposed. Looked at Kevin with a raised eyebrow, at the man's state. Coop, this is that tried to kill Brady. Nick nodded, fair enough. Your crime, he asked I'm sorry. I was wrong. Your crime. Nick repeated. Assisting to break rule number one he answered. Why? I, 
I don't know, Valerie said it would be okay. Once you marked her. No one could interfere with her and your bond. Not even you. You would be bound by rule number one yourself. Would have to accept it, could protect us from you, once she was the Luna he blabbed everything, clearly trying to gain some favor and maybe Nick would be lenient with him. Did she? Yes Alpha, I'm sorry. It's too late, do you see my Luna by my side? No he heard the man whisper. Nick nodded, looked at the crowd and could see it really dawn on them. She was not beside him, no longer here in the pack to be their Luna. He snapped the man's neck and watched as his body fell right next to his dead mother. Turned and looked at the man's mate, could see the filigree fading off of her neck already, burning away from her with the death of her mate. There were tears pouring down her face, her eyes on the lifeless corpse at his feet. Nick took a single step to his left, bring her he said pointing to the spot right next to her dead mate. She fell to the ground, he noted she was not wearing handcuffs, she was sobbing with the pain of losing her mate, too much to bear. He stood and watched her as she knelt next to him, a hand on his lifeless corpse and sobbed uncontrollably. Broken it seemed do you have children, he asked her. She shook her head, no. Nick's head tilted slightly to the side as he looked down at her, hunkered down right in front of her. You're not from here originally, are you? No, she whispered. He could hear it, rip too. Their alpha hearing picked it up. Now she was right in front of him. A tiny fluttering heartbeat inside her womb. He wanted to end her life as much as the others but found he could not while she was carrying a pup inside of her. Thought about it long and hard, what to do with her. She was a traitor to him, to his pack. I will banish you. Go back to your old pack. I will inform your old Alpha, of your crimes and, while I am being lenient with you, for the sake of the pup growing in your womb. What he does with you. Is not my problem. Her eyes turned up to his very wide in shock, a hand shot to her belly. She didn't know yet, it was clear to him. He had just imparted the news to her. She was hearing it for the very first time. Take her back to the cells, till transport is arranged, he stated and stood up. She was taken away, now quiet, in shock at the news he had just imparted about the pup she was carrying. Nick looked out at his pack. They were all looking at him. They had never before seen him seethe with rage. Well, not like this. He had raged a war against Liam and his unit and all those loyal to him, but it had been very loud and very aggressive for all to hear. They were all quiet, had heard the charges, heard not one of them deny it. Heard that his Luna was not by his side. What they made of that itself, he didn't know. Whether they thought she was dead he had no idea. They, however, did not look afraid of him, he noted. Some of them just looked sad. Some were leaning into their mate, holding on to them, some were even crying, he noted. Many of them looked angry, but he knew it wasn't directed at him. Those that were angry were all looking at the only one left to be dealt with. Brady, he finally said, pointing to the ground next to the two already dead before him uncuff her. Why? his delta asked. Because if she runs. She is rips. He heard Valerie start to struggle and fight. The whole way over, saw her being forced down on the ground by Brady. The mate she had rejected on the spot. A man who deserved a she-wolf a hundred times her caliber, the cuffs were removed and she turned her eyes up to meet Nick's. She had some nerve, he thought. Looking at us like that. Rip snarled with all he had, and she was forced by his aura all the way down to the ground, not just to kneel and bear before them, but to put her head on the ground, the most painful thing in the wolf and society 
to be forced by your alpha to bear all the way to the ground, to be forced so low. Your crimes, he snarled. Rip wanted out and he wanted his pound of flesh. Nick was barely in control of his beast now. I didn't, she stuttered. What was that? His claw were suddenly out, Rip pushing past his control in a small way. Nearly all the way out. I just, you were mine first she gasped I, was, never, yours both he and Rip spoke together. Seeing as she wasn't about to state her crimes, he would do it for her, for all to hear. Your crime. You drugged, kidnapped, and tried to have my Delta killed he stated loudly for all to hear. He could not kill her without them knowing her crime. As much as he wanted to just let Rip out to have her, alive he is to attest to your crime against him. Nick's eyes moved to Brady. Yes Alpha, she did drug me. Had her brother leave me for dead, to drown in a river at the height of high tide. It was my brother she pleaded. Nick turned his eyes back to her, the most disgusting creature he had seen in a very long time. Did you ask him to? It was an alpha order not a question. Yes he heard the pain it caused her to answer him honestly, pain because she had wanted to lie about it. Your other crime. I, I just wanted, to be with you she gasped out the words. I have a mate, now gone. Because you drugged me. Tried to use my Luna's blood, to make me think, make me believe you were here. Tried to mate me he heard the entire crowd gasp now tried to have me mark you, while I was drugged. I, I love you Nick she sobbed. Love, he thought, as pain ripped at his heart. He'd had love, just gotten it, in fact, struggled to get his Luna to trust him to love him and it was gone now. She was gone. He kicked Valerie so hard, Rip flooded him with the power to make her go flying through the air, she screamed in pain and went rolling across the road when she landed, just lay there holding her abdomen, blood coming from her mouth. He stalked after her, reached down and picked her up, his large hand around her already bruised neck. Already been choked, it seemed, and by the look of her bruised and battered face, had a run-in with, Jeremy. Brady had been missing and he'd seen in the security footage, that it had been Jeremy who'd been the one to rip her off his body and go after her. Had gone ahead and tortured the information about Brady out of her, and who had helped her with her plan to try and be his Luna. Nick approved. He would have done no less himself. Her feet were barely touching the ground and she had both her filthy disgusting hands on his, trying to pry him loose. She had no hope it was Rip who had her and his claws were out and digging into her skin. Your crime. You broke rule number one. Invoked the law of public execution for yourself and all who helped you. He saw her eyes move from him, to over his left shoulder. Turned to look and see Brady standing there. The man looked impassive and uncaring to Nick. This she-wolf had once been his mate. It crossed Nick's mind as to how he was feeling. Put the woman on her feet but Rip did not let go. Would not relinquish her, allowed her to take a breath. Did not look at her. His eyes were on his delta, he said nothing. Was standing there with his arms folded across his chest. Didn't seem to care. But that didn't mean that he did not. Brady, please. I am your mate she begged him, the man she had rejected years ago, then asked her brother to kill him just yesterday. The way she had looked at Brady, Nick had known it was coming, it's why he allowed her to breath, to plead for her worthless life to a man she also drugged and tried to kill, one of the Alpha unit at that. She had waged a fight she could not win. Even if she had gotten all she wanted, he would have killed her. If Jeremy hadn't done it first. Nick's eyes were still on his delta, watching him, waiting for the man to reply. It only took 15 seconds, 
and the words he spoke Nick believed the time he took to answer. All he was trying to do was give the she-wolf a sense of hope when there was none. You are not my mate. Never were. He told her, looking right at her. Then his eyes moved right to Nick's invoke the law. Alpha Nicholas he stated very formally, his tone uncaring and emotionless. Nick nodded. Felt Valerie really start to struggle now, as she realized she could not be saved. Though why she would think that she could, in the first place, was beyond him. Even if Brady had wanted to save her, he could not. She had to die, was going to die. His eyes moved to her, Rip was furiously clawing at his mind. Your punishment is death, he informed her and let go of her watched as she turned and took her first step to run for her life. Let go of his grip on Rip and felt the first crack of his shift. She ran screaming in terror as Rip burst out of him with all his alpha rage pouring out of him. Shot after her, his claws dragging her down in seconds to the ground, stood right on her back, his massive jaws around her neck, you wanted me to bite you Valerie. Nick shot through the mind link at her so I will his words were cold and resolute, the last thing she would ever hear, his voice. Rip pushed his claws into her shoulders, holding her down and then, with all his strength he had as an alpha wolf, pulled ferociously on her neck, severing her head from her body completely in one swift motion. Then just dropped her head next to her lifeless corpse and stood snarling down at her body. Before turning and stalking away, back towards the pack house, everyone stepped aside and let his wolf pass. His pack had watched as he'd killed three of his own pack members, remorselessly for their treasonous acts. His self-control had been uncompromising. All of his alpha authority was displayed before them. He would not tolerate traitors. He would not tolerate his first law being broken and now they all knew it. He'd never had to invoke it. Had never wanted to, the threat alone, should have been enough to scare most wolves straight. Now they knew with unwavering certainty. It was not to be messed with. That their alpha, would in fact follow through with the laws he'd put in place. He was shifted back halfway down the alpha floor, knew Jeremy and Samantha were both following him, could feel his mother's nervousness. Jeremy appeared to be calm, to him. Nick pushed into his suite and banged the door closed, shutting them out. They could not be in here with him for this. He took a ragged breath in, and let go of all his control. Felt instantly pain and rage flood him, not just his but rips as well, and they destroyed everything in their rage. Smashed and ripped. Pulled furniture apart with his bare hands threw everything at the walls. Rip snarling and howling in his rage and pain. Right there with him, he punched and kicked and ripped the plaster off the walls, the doors of their hinges, the mantle off of the fireplace, till there was nothing left to destroy. Stood in what remained of his living room, breathing heavily, tears burning his eyes as he walked into the bedroom, turned away from their bed and walked into the walk-in. It was all that was left of her. He fell down onto his knees and sobbed like a child. After a while, he sank down and just stared at her belongings. He would never take another. If he could not find her, he'd live the rest of his life alone. Reached out to touch that pretty purple dress, the one she'd worn just for him, because he'd asked her to. Their first date. His fingers touched it his hand stilled, the alpha oath still on his wrist, he turned it over and looked at it. His oath was still, in effect, shot to his feet, she was still alive out there somewhere and here he was wallowing in self-pity. There were only two places she would go. To the twins. Or to her home. Nick yanked on clothes, looked at that dress. He would see her wear it again. Marched himself right out of his suite, Jeremy he found was standing right there in the hallway apparently just waiting on him to pull himself together. Did you call Alpha Cory and ask if she's there? 
Jeremy shook his head. No. I didn't want to start a war. Nick thought about it as they walked down the hall. The war would already be on us. She didn't go there then. She went home. It's the only other place she would go. We'll need Kevin, Nick. Then get him he stalked right into his office and picked up the phone, found the number and dialed it just in case. Beta Adam answered the phone half moon pack. Is Lucinda there? Nick rapped out, not being around the bush. No, Nick. Not there. He hung up. Looked at Jeremy. Get my car, we're going to the White Lotus Pack. Yes Nick he nodded and left the office. His phone was ringing, he knew it was either Beta Adam or Alpha Cory calling back to find out what was going on. He had bigger things to deal with. Brady could call them and explain it. Nick wouldn't be coherent anyway, doubted he'd be able to actually get the words out. He saw the USB drives Jeremy had used to show him what had happened and picked them up, grabbed his laptop and left his office. It was the only way he had of proving his innocence. Though finding Lucinda and getting her to come with him to watch it, was likely not going to be easy. KYRA was likely going to be in full control, he thought. Won't hurt our mate. Neither will I. Nick agreed. She had been through enough. Whatever the outcome, it would end her way. He would not fight her physically, she was already in too much pain. His car was out the front, Jeremy was waiting, Kevin appeared to be having a serious discussion with Phoebe, she didn't want him to go, it seemed, worried for his safety. I'll send him back Phoebe. Alive I promise he told her I need him to come. She was looking right at him, yes Alpha she nodded and hugged him. Told him he'd better come back to her or she'd hunt him down and kill him herself. Made Kevin laugh softly, he kissed her and got in the back seat. I'll drive. Nick snapped, shoving his laptop and USBs at Jeremy. He could use the distraction. Sitting in the passenger seat just thinking about it would not bode well for anyone. I've told Brady he's in charge, Jeremy, informed him as he drove them away from the pack house. Good, I know he can handle it. The rest of the audiobook will be continued in the next episode, join us on Patreon for early access or more great audiobooks, a link is provided in the video description.